Hello and welcome to another video in the ISIS Explained series. My name is William Peck, I'm a reporter for European Daily Electricity Markets, and I'm going to explain to you the concept of negative prices in European power markets, in particular Germany. So what is a negative power price? A negative price means that a generator has to pay in order to feed power into the grid. Normally they'd be paid to do this, but when prices turn negative it means the grid doesn't want their generation and they have to pay. Germany quite often gets negative prices for short periods, but sometimes this can last to the extent that power, the power price is actually negative for a day as a whole, particularly on low de demand days during weekends or bank holidays. So why do negative prices occur? Pow power grids always need to balance so that supply equals demand. Demand is predictable, but the integration of renewables has added a non-adjustable form of generation on the supply side that can vary massively based on weather conditions. If renewables generation is high, conventional plants are expected to ramp down, which makes sense because renewables have no fuel cost and so can run basically for free. Germany has the highest renewables share in Europe. If we look to the 30th of July as a recent example of when German power prices went negative, brown coal or lignite and nuclear plants are both producing a lot despite the oversupply. That's because it's not technically or economically feasible for them to ramp down for a short period of time as this has costs and can wear out equipment. Renewables plants can go offline if the prices are, ne are very negative, but most of them don't because they're still paying for less for producing than they receive as a subsidy. So how often do prices go negative in Germany? Well, these used to go negative more deeply in 2012. Minus 221 euros 99 per megawatt hour still holds the record for the cheapest hour within a day ahead power price. In 2012, the German power grid simply wasn't ready to adjust to the volatility of its growing renewables capacity. In 2014 and 2015, prices didn't go as low as gas and coal plants got more flexible and better at ramping up and down. Since last year, though, negative prices have become more extreme again, as renewables capacity has grown to the extent that further flexibility is required in order to avoid uh, negative prices. So what are some of the ways for transmission system operators to avoid negative prices? Well, increasing the flexibility of conventional generation is one way, but gas and coal-fired plants already have the potential to ramp down extensively, and there's not that much room for further advancement. Aging German lignite and nuclear generators won't become more flexible, but are being phased out. Adding energy storage to the grid is another way, but this is generally not yet commercially viable on a large scale. TSOs could also add interconnector capacity to export oversupplied power so that conventional generation ramps down in neighbouring markets like the, ne like the Netherlands is to Germany. Better renewables forecasts could also help the grid to adjust to high renewables output if this is known further in advance or with higher certainty. One last factor is demand side flexibility. Um, this, this would also help if, for instance, in the future electric cars were more popular and there could be financial incentives for people to charge these at times of oversupply. So what's the outlook? Will prices get more negative? Well, if they go negative enough, this would prompt investment by adding a financial burden to inflexible generation sources. This should help to avoid prices going more negative than they are currently, according to some experts. But moderately negative prices might be the new normal when power markets reach a renewable share equivalent to Germany's. That's at least until there's considerable advancement of storage, smart grid and other technologies.